Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am pouring a soap pump. Um, this one is starting off black so that creates a really interesting thing because I'm using these Paybo paints. Paybo Porcelain 150 they're called and they are bakeable so that they then become dishwasher safe which is really useful in a bathroom because you know you get your soap all scummy all down the sides and water and especially when you've got kids in the house which the lady who's asked me for this one um does so i'm her colors in her bathroom are black and white and wood with a little touch of fresh green and I don't have any green so what I thought I would do is just do blue and yellow together see what they create and hey if we don't like it she doesn't have to buy it you know <laughs> so I have been shopping and I went to a local I need to find a way of closing this bag actually um ah there's a thousand stir sticks in this bag and they are wooden stir sticks for coffee you know designed for having in cafes and stuff the cool thing about them is they're square ended so when you're stirring the bottom of your pot you get the whole thing I thought that was cool now when I was shopping for these paints I came across this um, thinner and uh, it's, it's designed to dilute the porcelain 150 so somebody said in the last video that I used this in you should use the thinner and thin it down and have runnier paints and see what that creates so that's what I'm going to do um, I've got, eek, if I can get the lid open, got it, so I've got the black, uh, which is pretty much full actually, I've hardly used that one, awesome, um, let's put a bit in there, a bit in there, a little bit in there, and a touch in there, because they have less paint in them to start with. So, we're just going to thin them down. Naturally, they are, all my other paintings with this paint, all my other mugs and stuff, I've got a playlist called Dishwasher Safe. And um, they've all come out perfectly fine. I've been quite happy with them. Uh, but some people get a little bit, and see if your paint's not runny enough. <laughs> so I thought, well, you know what? Let's give it a go. So this is what it looks like normally. I don't know if I'm actually making any difference, to be honest. I didn't put a lot in there. But probably because I don't feel like it needs thinning, to be honest. So that always makes a difference. You tend to err on the side. Of course, oh, God, that needs thinning. That white. It's much better, isn't it? Awesome. And one more. Stir in the black. Awesome. 
All right. Now, silicon. I want some cells. I like cells. So, for silicon dimethicone, I use the Durex Play Perfect Guide. The pink and black container is the one you're after. Why? Because it is 100% dimethicone and the ingredients list is there. Let's see if we can get that to focus. There we go. Ingredients, dimethicone. And that's all there is in it. It's great. Um, dimethicone is silicon and it's what we use for pouring which is awesome. Now, I'm going to set this up on a pot just so that the edges can drip down. And I'm going to put silicon directly into the blue and the yellow and give those a bit of a stir now I'm going to start off with the can you see what I'm doing? Probably not. Let's, let's move you into a position where you can see what I'm doing. Maybe. Maybe I'll just hold it in a way that you can see it. Alright, so I'm going to pour the white in first. Now, as you can see, I have got a... This is a little tuna tin. And I've bent it to a pouring point. And I like that. because it gives me more control about where it's going. Well, that's quite runny. We'll do. A bit more white. And then black on the top. Now, I have got this sitting on top of a Lazy Susan, which is upside down. The bit that you'd normally use on the top is on the ground. And I'm using the foot part because I can just turn it around and I can get to the whole thing. It makes it really easy. So I'm going to pour on this side and then turn it towards you so that you can see it. And I've got that black on the top. And I'm just going to have that pour out first just to give us a base coat. And just keep going around until all that black's come off the top. And here we go. We're starting to get some colour now. Not much. But it's coming. Now, as you can see, I've started from the side at the corner point. So I want to get a lot of a round of colour evenly 
spread. There we go. And now I'm going to go up to this point and pour it. Oh my god, that looks like a geode. Oh wow. That looks very cool. Kind of hope she doesn't want it. I want it. And then I'm just going to keep going around until I run out of colour. Hoping that this will soon start to run down the sides. Yep, there it goes. Okay, let me lift you up and show you what the top looks like. How cool is that? I've got something in the white here and it's just holding it and let, causing it. See that? Causing it just to pull in odd directions. Now, what I've done in the past is I have, you know, put my finger in and started, oh, sorry, you can't see. Let me put you back down again and I can see what you can see. I put my finger in and tried to drag it so it covers the whole thing. And I'm not actually going to touch this one. I'm just going to let it run. Um, and I'm very excited about the drip off that's happening because... Now that we dip our cabochons in, that gets exciting what, what runs down there. I'm just going to turn this around for you so you can see. All the way around. That's it. Yeah. Let me get a little piece, a couple of pins and get that big chunk out because I don't want it drying with that chunk in it. Here we go. That one's just an air bubble. That's a chunk though. Right. So I can see air bubbles forming. And we're now at a point where I think we're ready to torch it. So I'm going to give it a few more seconds while I close all these lids. In some places it's almost made it completely to the bottom, but in other places it's still quite high up. But that's okay, not an issue. This is so not what she wants, but that's totally fine. <laughs> ah, the joys of commissions, eh? This is what the colours I want. Um, yeah, not happening. Sorry, Dal. <laughs> All right, let's get our little torchy watchy. Oh, not that one. We got a new torch. Have I shown you guys this before? I think I have. It kind of looks like a grenade. But that's okay.
definitely lots of cell action in there which is exciting get rid of those air bubbles as well How's that look? Pretty funky, I reckon. The fun thing about 3D objects is when you bring your cells to the top, they then distort. Oh no, I can't zoom on this. Let me make him void. And bring you in for a closer look. Check out that distortion. Wow. That's cool. I very much like it. It's got. I'm just hoping that it. I'm looking forward to seeing how this dries. Check out the top. Alright. So, going to pause the video move this to a safe place and then I'm going to bring you back in the overhead camera spot and we'll see what we can get um, pendant wise out of what's dripped off so give me a minute all right so let's have a look at what we've got I'm gonna take that off there sure you've got a good view up okay. let's move the paint rather than the camera because it's not really working okay so as you can see there's some really funky bits in here um really funky bits so for those of you that are new to my channel um, a lot of people would let this dry and then um, glue it to the underside of a cabochon now this is a cabochon it's a glass <laughs> nearly dropped it right in the middle of it <laughs> Um, and you put it into a pendant bezel and make pendants out of them, all right? And you put p pictures behind them. So a lot of people would be, um, yeah, would let this dry and then cut it out and glue it to the back. But what I've found really, really fun and really, really easy is just to um, get a piece of blue tack. That's what we call it here in New Zealand. I don't know what you call it. You know, that the stuff you put posters up with and stuff. And put it on the back of the round side of the cabochon as a holder. And then polish up the flat side so it's clean. And then find a piece. Put it down and pick it up. And you've captured exactly what you could see. How cool is that? 
So now I'm just going to turn that over, pop it over there on its round side so it can dry. Let me show you that. Do, 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 do. See, it's just sitting over there, paint side up. It'll self-level a little bit and then it will dry and we're good to go. Then you just glue that straight into the pendant and it is done. It's so quick, so easy. All right, so what else have we got in here? I am really, really loving where I've taken that up. It now looks like a, a, a dancer with flowing chiffon -y stuff. Just turning it around, having a look, seeing what we've got. Nothing else is really jumping out at me as it is at the moment. But having seen the uh, response of the silicon um, to the heat gun, I'm gonna, gonna see what we get if I just run the torch over this. Well, we definitely got some cells coming up here. This one's a lot prettier now. That one's got cells in it, but I'm not sure whether it made it look prettier. <laughs> okay. So I've got lots of different shapes. I've got round and hearts and squares and teardrops. I'm actually thinking I might grab this part on a rectangle. So let's put our Blue tack on the red tangle, polish up the underside. And I'm going to turn it around so I've got a little bit more control. I hope I got it. There we go. How's that one? That's funky. Carefully turn it over and place it down. I must say, I really quite like this tiny little ringlet through here. But I don't know. If I can capture that. So this one over here looks like it needs to be a circle. Get out a circle and clean that one up. Now, I don't know if you can tell from up there, but when I put it in, I put it in on a slight, a slight angle so that you've got one side going in first and then you're dropping it kind of almost rolling the cabochon across the paint 
to look at that one. Pretty. Bit of smudging from the blue tack there. All right. I'm just this piece here. I'm wondering what does it want to be? I'm thinking another rectangle. Not quite sure how I'm going to position it though. Through there. Through there, okay. <laughs> la la la, la la la. Wow. Get rid of the... Look at that. Yum! <laughs> wow, wow. That's so cool! Yay! Alright, any more that want to come and play? Okay, I'm just wondering about this one here. Square? Yeah. Let's go square. Oh, we've only got a couple of square cabochons left. Crikey me. I have to order some more. So if you're wondering where I get these from, I get these from Amazon. You can also find them on Wish. Um, but there'll be a link in the description for Amazon. The cool thing about doing it this way is if when they're dry, you, you have another look at them and you don't like them, you just wash them off and reuse the cabochon.
I like it. Right, guys. So let's have a look at this thing while it's. So this thing's continued to move. Looks like stained glass on the top there. It's just stunning. I love that. Um, coming down the sides though. Mm -hmm. The cells have all just gone mushy. But hey, you know what? That's okay. Alright, so I'm going to let it dry and we'll come back and we'll have a look at this and see what it looks like when it's completely dry. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Alright, so sweet ones, this is pretty much dry. Um, um, yeah, not overly fussed with the way it's dried. Maybe I should have let it run just a little bit more before I torched it but the top is pretty cool i like the top and you know what she called in today she saw it she said oh, i know it's not green but i still like it i was like oh cool i wasn't getting any better than that <laughs> so first of all we need to get rid of these little driplet droplets although they're fairly even and it will sit It'll probably let the water run out the bottom you know it won't trap water underneath but, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, bro, that's, um, it's a Kiwiism, yeah, nah, meaning yes, no, bro, yeah, no, bro, yeah, no, we're not going to have that, they've even got t-shirts with yeah, nah on it, how odd is that, anyway, so I'm just going to slide my blade out, and, if you're squeamish, don't watch, watch this bit. I promise not to cut myself. I've had in the past people telling me I shouldn't be doing this sort of thing without Teflon gloves on. Didn't even know Teflon gloves existed for people other than butchers. So there you go. Just trimming those bits off. I just want to get that cut while it's still a little bit soft because if you leave it to completely dry or it's it can catch the flakes and um rip up into the good stuff that you want to keep so just do this while it's still soft obviously it's got to be hard enough to be able to hold so that you can Flip it over. So let's put our little pump on it and see how she looks. I'm not going to screw it down tight because that top bit's probably still a bit damp. There we go. I like it. I really like it. I, what I, one thing I've no, just noticed that I really quite like is the original porcelain um, is a mattish black, whereas the black paint, which ran down first and actually created the space for it to run, is a bit shiny. So you've kind of got this little black shiny border around each of these paint runs. Not sure if it's picking it up quite. Let me see if I can get it that way. Yeah, 
no can't get it but I definitely really like this top that is so funky it looks like stained glass So there you go, there's that. Now let's have a look at the pendants and see how they dried because I'm very happy with them. Uh, I can't remember which order I did them in, so I'm just going to show them all to you. This one is funky. It's got... So it's really hard to photograph these pendants because of the convex shape and it being glass you get a lot of reflection but i don't know if you can see it but to me it looks like some sort of creature it might be little red riding hood grandma looking out from under her bed hat it might be um Kind of reminds me a little bit of E.T. or it reminds me a little bit of, um, you know, the, the trainer dude in Star Wars, the old guy, um, Yoda, that's his name. So there you go, that's what I see in that. I see a being with big googly eyes looking that way. <laughs> kind of see it a little bit more when it's not quite so close up. Anyway, so there's that one. And as I said, I don't know what order I did these in. So this one I love. These have just got so much depth in them. They just, they actually remind me a lot of some of those things that you can create on that app that I posted yesterday. That has just got so much detail. Let me... Let me get it focused and then I'll zoom rather than bring it closer. Look at this. It is stunning. I like that one a lot. So I'll leave my hand there because it was in focus and bring the next one to you. <laughs> that one. Again, it's got so much possibilities in it. It's like um, a waterfall coming down the rocks. Look at those rocks. It's stunning. These pieces are just so beautiful. I like them a lot. And then we've got the square one. Again, so many layers, so swishy and swirly and oh, yummy. This paint does cool stuff. I like that one. Then we've got the round one. Not so keen on this one, but it's still fun. It's still funky. Kind of looks a little bit to me. Like here's the fish in the bottom of the ocean and a few bubbles. Anyway, that's what I see in there. What do you see? And then this one I actually did off camera. This is what drained out of the tin. And it's a lot brighter than what dripped into the black. Um, so that's a love heart one. I like that. I might have to get some more love hearts in different colours. Because I don't think this is quite going to go with the pendant colours I've got. So there we are guys. Um. We've got all those pendants. If you're interested in any of those, they are for sale. And just let me know which video and one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then I'll be able to tell what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so 
I've had lots of fun making this uh, and all of those. How much fun are you having? Let me know in the comments how much fun you're having with acrylic pouring and with your life. Um, what grand and glorious adventures can you have today? Not just with paint, but in your life. What if every morning you woke up and asked that question? Who am I today? And what grand and glorious adventures can I have? That's one of my favorite questions to ask from Access Consciousness. It's just reminds you that, you know what? You don't have to be the same person you were yesterday. You don't have to stick to the patterns that you've lived by for the last 50 years, 45 years, 20 years, however long you've been stuck in those patterns. But what you can do is choose who you be and what you're going to create. I adore you all. Have fun and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.